Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Enjoy. Hello, this is the Hot Topic Show. What do we do? We won't judge, but we're judging. It's going to be Drew Sack. Now, here's Wendy! Thank you for tuning in. Huh. And say hello to my co-host, my studio audience. Doing okay today, let's get started. It's time for Hot Yes! Thank you. So, you know, uh, Kathy Griffin has been a friend to our show from before TV. She was a friend of my radio show. She's a friend of this show. She's a friend in the name of I do stand up now when I have the time. <laughs> I, I like Kathy, but Kathy, there is no defending you. So TMZ got a hold of a photo, you've already seen the photo, of uh, Kathy holding a bloody, gory, uh, we're not showing that, mm -mm, of Donald Trump. Now, that to me is, first of all, he's our president. And you might not like him, you might not have voted for him, but he does deserve respect. Yeah. You know? If you want to talk about him at your kitchen table or at your cocktail party, that's a different thing. But when you're a comedian and you're, you know, and you're on stage or you know, you're doing a photo shoot, now apparently the photographer who took the pic picture is one of these edgy photographers. He's always done provocative stuff. So he's probably the one who came with the prop, you know, and pulled the head out. And then Kathy probably thought it'd be funny. And during the photo shoot, it's alleged that, you know, he was even coaching her like, no, 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 all we see is his profile. You have to face it forward, face it forward. And so that's what she did. And she goes to him allegedly during the photo shoot. We're gonna get in trouble for this one. So she, look, Kathy's a 50 something year old woman. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Second of all, Kathy Griffin is one of two people that I know in my personal life that has never had a drink or a pull or popped a pill. Like, she's totally sober, which, you know, like, you could blame it on the... Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you can get away with stuff like that, but Kathy has no excuses. And so now it's just a mess. The Secret Service are looking into everything. That'll probably go on for the rest of the presidency, I might add. So she's gonna have to pay her taxes every single time. <laughs> She's going to have to make sure her car is always registered with good emissions testing <laughs> and stuff. And thank God she doesn't drink or smoke. Can you imagine the paranoia? <laughs> oh my God, who's coming up the driveway? <laughs> All right, well now, and people are boycotting her comedy shows. Now I suspect that her beehive, no, but her beehive will be back. You know, because people who love Kathy get it. So she'll be back and she'll be back to sold out crowds. Norman, do you think? I, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I'm in the Kathy Beehive a little bit. Yeah. And I would, I mean, I can You were aside. offended, you called me. I was offended, definitely. But I mean, I would go see her again. You'll forget about it. Yeah. Well, she did apologize a few hours after the photo was released. You know, she was, um, you know, public shamed into apologizing. And um, this is not a, uh, an MGM production. This is Kathy sitting in her house, scrubbed free, with a cute bob. <laughs> and we've always talked about her hair, like me and her when she comes here and stuff, cause she's got like a coarse hair, you know what I mean? And you can really see it in the following. Anyway, take a look at her hair, but listen to what she says. Go ahead. Hey everybody, it's me, Kathy Griffin. 
I sincerely apologize. I am just now seeing the reaction of these images. I'm a comic. I crossed the line. I moved the line. Then I cross it. I went way too far. The image is too disturbing. I understand how it offends people. It wasn't funny. I get it. I've made a lot of mistakes in my career. I will continue. I ask your forgiveness, taking down the image, gonna ask the photographer to take down the image, and I beg for your forgiveness. I went too far, I made a mistake, and I was wrong. I mean, just the steps over her shoulder alone. Is this where uh, ne'er-do-wellers gain access to her bedroom? Oh. Because now, you know, if you have the Secret Service on you and if you piss off enough people, you do realize that she will always have to look over her shoulder for at least the next several years look over her shoulder. She could lose her New Year's Eve job. You know, she does it with the Anderson and the Cooper on uh, New Year's Eve. And well, now is about the time, you know, we're uh, last day of May. Now's about the time where these people who want you to host for New Year's Eve, they lock you in, they give you half your money, you sign a contract, boom, you know where you're gonna be New Year's Eve. If I were CNN, I would stay away from this for a moment. I'm gonna tell you why. Because we, the public, We'll totally forget about this in approximately 30 seconds. <laughs> We've got more things to focus on. <laughs> I mean, you know, besides the mess going on in our private lives, there's that Bill Cosby trial coming up. Oh. OJ's about to be released and be on the loose. Oh. And of course, we keep our eye on that disgusting Scott Disick. I'm sure he'll be dating more <laughs> underage girls. So all she has to do is just lay low. The problem is, is that we have a president who loves social media and he does it himself. So believe me, you, if CNN signs him, Trump is going to ramp up the absolute hate for her. As well, he, as well he should. I mean, beheading. Listen, if you carried a head that's bloody of your next door neighbor, that's equally as disgusting, like who does that? Our soldiers, men and women, are being decapitated over there. The streets are on fire with crime. You can't even go to the bank machine without getting acid in your face. Yeah, that's one of the latest things uh, that's going on here in New York. It's uh, uh, just Kathy, what were you thinking? And you can't even blame it on the good weed. <laughs> And now, Tiger Woods, we talked about him yesterday. The part that I left out of the story I forgot to tell you is that, you know, when his girlfriend got the telephone call that he was arrested, <clears throat> his girlfriend was in Neiman Marcus. She spent five, she bought her stuff. She spent $5,000. And uh, then she, but she was like, I knew it! So apparently, there's been something going on behind the scenes that the girlfriend has seen all along. And Tiger was reportedly released. I could have sworn it was some alcohol. Only cause I'm not familiar with the pill thing. So I, I didn't know that pills could make you look like this. <laughs> and have you pulling to the right of the turnpike with your blinker on and falling asleep with your head on the wheel while the car is still running. And then the cops roll up on you and they wake you up and ask you um, where you think you are. And he goes, I don't know. That's some pills for your ass, man. <laughs> He had two flat tires on the same side of the car, which means now he's leaning, okay? His rims were bent, and there was damage to the bumper. Well, damn it, Tiger, between Nike, your golf royalties, your golf money, don't you have enough money to have a, a full-time driver just sleep in the shed in the back of your house? Yeah, like, I mean, Forget even waiting to call an Uber or a Lyft or have a car service that you have to call. He's rich enough, he could have, you know how the rich people always have a house or two on their property? You could have a full-time driver just sleeping out there, just waiting for you to say, bring the car around. Now, this is what it's come to. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm so glad alcohol was not involved. They asked him to do the alphabet backwards. Who knows how to do that? <laughs> I, you know? And they asked him to do something else also. What'd they say? They, uh, the they, they had him doing his, uh, touch his nose. He couldn't do that. He couldn't like, uh, he couldn't, <laughs> he, okay, first of all, <laughs> 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 he, 
He tried to like say, they asked him to do the uh, national anthem backwards, but. Who knows it forward? <laughs> I mean, I do, I'm a patriot, but I'm just saying. Right, exactly. Well, he thought that's what they were asking him. But All right, look, yeah. in the best case scenario, I'm glad that these are pills because I feel like, um, unfortunately, but fortunately, people have more compassion to the pill ep epidemic than they do to if he was an alcoholic. If people understand that as an elite athlete, you know, he had the four back surgeries, a few blown out knee surgeries, and God only knows what else. You can imagine the kind of pain. And he can't heal the way you and I can. If I needed back surgery, I'd come to the show, but I'd have my brace on and I'd be limping and maybe slippers and a robe, but I feel comfortable in front of you. I'd come out and I, you know, I wouldn't run to the sh chair. I would, you know, shuffle and sit here <laughs> and talk to you. But when you're an athlete, you've got to perform, you know? So you have to imagine the degree of pain was still there, but if he wants to, you know, win the masters, he's got to take, okay, it only says take one. Let me take six. I, I get it. Good, you know what? I do think that there is a comeback for Tiger in the public eye, now that we know that alcohol wasn't involved. Roland is here. Well, I'm gonna talk to him about that later. Roland, ha, good morning, Roland. We'll talk later. So, he appears in court on July 5th and we'll see what happens. Tiger, get yourself together. I'm sorry to hear what happened. I can't even think what I watched on TV last night, but it wasn't America's Got Talent. <laughs> Not because I don't like the show, it's just because, you know, I, you forget. Some, like a thousand channels, sometimes you forget. I get caught up in the ID channel and all kind of mess. Oh, Ashley Banfield, I was, yeah, my HLN. All right, so last night was Tyra Banks' premiere as the host, and according to what a lot of my staffers here at Wendy were saying, and they have a scrutinizing eye, they said she wasn't bad at all. Yeah. yeah. And then we woke up this morning, she got good reviews. They said she fit right in. And it was like Tyra being Tyra. So I don't know, Clap, did you watch last night? I did. Let me guess, Love and Hip Hop? <laughs> was that on last night? No. There was something blackish on. <laughs> What was, what, was, what was on? Tuesday night um, is, was last night Tuesday night? Yeah, Tuesday. Go back to bed, Norman. Right. <laughs> in, in the meantime, um, uh, Suzanne, did you watch America's, because that's a family show for you and the kids. And I never watched that show before, but it was on. Okay. And I couldn't stop watching. Yeah, it's a I good show. She, it is a good show, and I thought she did a great job. Yeah. Like it looked fun. A lot of people who watch the show regularly, yeah. and I've got I've mm -hmm. got uh, like a beehive of people who watch America's Got Talent here, and they were Nick. Sorry, they were saying they didn't even miss you. Uh huh. I mean, you don't know Nick for nope. being there, nope. so you didn't nope. know. But people... I liked her. I liked her. I thought I think it's a perfect show for her. Good for you, Tyra. Mm -hmm. Then and oh, they say Mel B looked really good last night as well. You know, around the time that they were filming um, this this thing, it was about the same time that she announced her divorce. So she was going through things, but she held it together. Apollo, it is, you know what? It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that Apollo has been in, um, I popped two zippers this morning before coming out here. <laughs> Doggone boobs. This was not my pick. It, it just, just, let, like, just jump in, we got five minutes and go. So, but I popped two zippers of, my first choice popped and I virtually wanted to cry my eyelashes off because it's such a pretty dress. And then the second choice, anyway. <laughs> I hope you like my third choice. <laughs> Apollo's been in jail for two years. Doesn't it seem like just yesterday? Yes. Look how time passes. And he does a pretty good job of keeping himself, you know, in the magazines and mentioned every once in a while here on Hot Topics. Well, he's uh, trying to um, get his hands on Phaedra's money. Well, of course, you guys. I mean, what else does he have to do? You know, when you're in prison, you got a lot of time to think about how you're gonna exact revenge when you get out or become a better person, you know, either way. Apollo reportedly wants their prenup to be thrown out. Well. 
he's claiming that he shined, signed the prenup shortly before the Real Housewives of Atlanta uh, deal was done. And then Phaedra's money started rolling in. Now see, he wasn't getting paid from Housewives. You know, she was the one getting paid from Housewives. The men don't get paid or something like that. Only if you're a special man, but I can't think of a, <laughs> I can't think of any, um, like who would, I don't think any of them get paid. Anyway, but she was getting paid, and so now he wants, you know, part of that money. Well, of course, you know, he's angry. He knows when he comes out after being in jail for five years for the first stretch for bank fraud, uh, stealing from the Delta Airline Retirement Fund employees, and what else? Auto insurance Auto fraud. Auto insurance fraud. Uh-huh. So he went to jail for five years for that. She's the dumbbell who married him when he got out. <laughs> Knowing that, you know, a five-year stretch for a black man in a lot of cases makes you vir virtually unemployable unless you can really pull yourself together. I'm not saying don't, uh, shout out to um, everybody on lockdown. I'm not saying there's no hope for you. I'm not saying there's no hope for you. I'm just saying if you've got a criminal past, you know, people look at that a little sideways. And if you happen to be black and a man, you get the double sideways. So she's the dummy who married him and, um, She's also the attorney who I'm sure has an ironclad prenup. But Paula, you're not getting any of this money. Uh -oh. I'm not giving it to you. Uh, Phaedra also now is unemployed. She's not working at the Housewives anymore. Remember, she was fired. Um, she, she might have the law firm, but who's going to Phaedra and Phaedra <laughs> Esquire to do so much as to clear a parking ticket? And, and somebody in the morning meeting said, well, she's got the funeral home. I said, nope. That wasn't her funeral home. She was learning the mortuary makeup and embalming technique and whatnot from a, you know, one of her colleagues. She doesn't have a funeral home. She doesn't have anything. Back to the streets. <laughs> I don't mean the streets, I just mean <laughs> Back to being the Phaedra whose bathing suits when they go on vacation exemplify a whole nother side of the alleged counselor. So back to that life. <laughs> He's so cute, this Trey Songs. He has this way with his eyes, and I'm telling you, I've seen them up close through the radio and also through here on the purple couch. He has a way where he's trying to do something to you. <laughs> so you have to deflect or remind yourself of your life or something. Anyway, so he's currently on tour, and at every show, oh, he's doing the corny most. <laughs> So, sorry, Trey Songs. I, I find I find nothing hot about this. This is the corn. This has been going on since before Keith Sweat. <laughs> so he pulls a random girl on stage. This is not a girl who was placed there. This is the real deal, like a girl from the front row, and tries to seduce her. Oh. You know, shout out to all the small girls or larger or, or larger girls with a bigger man, because you know that you know. <laughs> There's some girls who can't be picked up like that. <laughs> Listen, people are saying that his behavior is gonna get um, a lot of his female fans in trouble with their men. I said, why? What dumb girl's gonna be sitting next to her man and, and Trey Songz tries to pull her on stage and, she, and you say yes? I don't care it's your birthday. <laughs> I, 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 like, I don't care. If I were your man, I would leave you in his lap just like that. <laughs> Yep. Yep. And a lot of the artists do that corny mess. I just always find it so corny and desperate from the fans. Like you could be a fan of somebody, but really, it, you know, uh, like Janet does that. Well, did that. I, I don't know what. She, I don't know what she's capable of this time around. But um, you know, Janet. You know, the female artists and the male artists. They do that corny mess. Ugh, Rihanna's being fat shamed. Well, this has been going on for a moment. I've been seeing it all over the blogs and stuff. Now the Navy is really pissed. That's her beehive. The, the Navy is very, very pissed. Listen, she was spotted out in New York City this uh, weekend, this past weekend, and, and clearly she's gained a few pounds. 
but not in a bad way. Just, that, that's just good eating. You know, well, she just finished filming Ocean's Eleven. You know, the craft services sometimes on these movies. I have to tell you, and depending on the stars that you're starring with, like she was with Sandra Bullock, and who was in Ocean's Eleven? Um, I think Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, big people. It, I think, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, not big like that. I, I mean, big like, <laughs> like Melissa, you know, this is the, this is the movie uh, craft services that would have lobster, firm shrimp. There's nothing worse than a mushy shrimp. Could you agree? You know, good stuff. Anyway, so there's this writer though, this one particular writer at this place where smelly men go to talk about women in a locker room kind of way. It's called Barstool Sports. And he posted um, an article titled, Is Rihanna Going to Make Being Fat the Hot New Trend? And then he goes on and on. He says, oh, she's pushing like 180 pounds. He goes, I hope she's pregnant. It's time you worry if you're not a guy who fancies himself a chubby chaser. Oh. He also wrote, a world of ladies shaped like the Hindenburg, loaded into one piece bathing suits, may be on the horizon now that Rihanna is trapezing around there looking like she's uh, a, sumo, uh, a sumo suit. <laughs> Terrible. I would like to have him arrested. <laughs> Clearly she's confident with it. Now, so that this, this blogger guy, he's being, um, even his boss, you know, said that wasn't right. He didn't get fired, but you know, that wasn't right, whatever. Fat shame, skinny shame. Oh, look, I lost my weight. You will skinny shame me. Oh, people think I'm anorexic. Me? Really? I'm anorexic. Oh my God, you're losing too much weight. Yeah, skinny shamed. Never thought in my fat life would I ever see the day that I'd be skinny shamed. And I love it. <laughs> We've got more great show for you, everybody. <laughs> TV One's Roland Martin is on the couch. But up next, it's time for Celebrity Fan Out. So grab a snack, grab two snacks, and come on back.